So I think you all are aware of it about Linux Foundation. Linux Foundation is this uh, kind of large now, but not by the numbers of people working there, but by numbers of projects it's hosting. The Linux Foundation is a non-profit organization based in the United States, uh, hosting lots of different uh, foundations like CNCF is under Linux Foundation, Linux Foundation Network is under Linux Foundation, Open Source Security Foundation is under Linux Foundation. So it's kind of home to many different open source projects that are kind of uh, organized similar to Linux Foundation, separate, separate foundations. They all look at different aspects of, you know, open source technologies. Like in continuous delivery context, there's continuous delivery foundation. In cloud native context, is cloud native company foundation, and so on. And uh, I think one of them is CD Foundation, and the others like Linux is under Linux Foundation as well as cloud native company foundation, OpenSF, OpenJS Foundation. So it's like if you are working with these, all these different technologies, you definitely used or contribute to some of the open source projects hosted by one of the foundation, foundations under Linux Foundation. And uh, when it comes to CD Foundation, CD Foundation, as the name suggests, Continuous Delivery Foundation, its sole focus is Continuous Delivery, anything and everything about Continuous Delivery. And like the purpose of the foundation is to improve the world's uh, ability to deliver software with security and speed. This is like motto of the foundation since its uh, formation. Sometimes uh, people ask, like, why Continuous Delivery Foundation is there, what it is doing, and so on. Because if you think all these different foundations, you might see many different Continuous Delivery GitOps related projects under different foundations as well. Like you probably are using or looking to Argo, Flux, and other projects. And when it comes to Continuous Delivery Foundation, the sole, sole purpose of Continuous Delivery Foundation is Continuous Delivery. And as you can think, Continuous delivery is a cross-cutting concern. It's not specific to cloud native. You might be doing embedded, you might be doing cloud native development, regardless of what type of development you are doing, regardless of your product portfolio. Continuous delivery is a common concern across the different industries and different companies. That's why Linux Foundation created Continuous Delivery Foundation. And it was around 2019 they announced the formation of Continuous Delivery Foundation after they formed the CNCF. CNCF was founded around 2015. And so, so what I'm trying to say is like, if you are using any of the open source continuous integration consider projects, if you are thinking of, oh, why this feature is not there or why this bug has been there for years, continuous Zero foundation and the projects under continuous Zero foundation could be the ones you could look into, start using and start collaborating. And some of the purposes we have it in CD Foundation is that, again, since you're all, all here, you are pretty, you know, competent, well informed and pretty, you know, advanced users of continuous delivery. But things are not same for all the other different organizations. Some organizations are just starting to look into continuous delivery, continuous delivery. They are in need of learning how they can do that. And for that, we are working on establishing best practice within continuous delivery ecosystem and continuous delivery foundation is uh, working around establishing best practice practice for such organizations as well. In addition to having these, you know, basic best practices, sometimes some companies, they are pretty ahead of others. Like if you think some very well-known companies like Netflix and others, they come up with new ideas, new ways of doing stuff. And they also contribute such use cases and such best practices to our best practice knowledge base. So you can, also look at what is ahead of me. Now I am a competent user of continuous delivery technologies. I am following all these best practices. What is next? So you can look at what others are doing and start moving towards more advanced use cases. We are working with education of continuous delivery itself as well as the technologies organizations use like Jenkins, Tecton, Spinnaker, and so on. And we provide courses like free courses for these technologies as well as best practices. And lastly, and perhaps one of the most important things about Continuous Delivery Foundation is cross-pollination. If you look at the members, for example, you see 
many different types of companies coming from different industries, like their financial uh, in the industry companies, their Fidelity, JP Morgan. We have like Google, we have JFrog, Red Hat, and so on. This allows all these different companies and people from these different companies to work together and you know share knowledge with each other. That essentially charts the future because some of these industries are highly regulated. They have much higher regulatory requirements and so on. They might be slow adopting some new practice and so on. But by working with others who might not have such requirements and ahead of themselves, they can learn about what they may be facing in future when it comes to adopting these new ways of doing things. And a good example is around CD events, which hopefully we'll Emil talk about. Fidate, for example, they are a financial institution and they are working with very regulated, you know, highly regulated environment. And with the help of open source, with the help of continuous their foundation, they actually started changing their processes because they looked at how others are doing this stuff and they actually impacted their internal processes to start using open source more, contributing open source more, and modernizing their content theory and production systems. So cross-pollination is really important aspect, and obviously Ericsson is one of the contributors as well to CD Foundation. Maybe some of you asked, like, what is the purpose of having foundations? Why these projects don't exist standalone, like Eiffel? That is correct. That is highly possible. But in some cases, when the projects grow a lot with thousands of contributors and hundreds of different organizations essentially relying on those projects, the sustainability aspect becomes important because when things are running based on people's you know, their own on their own time and as a hobby, then that is kind of risky for making those projects sustainable for future. <clears throat> In addition to that, sometimes these projects require, you know, cloud resources. They may be costly to pay, and that in turn hits the quality and security of those projects. That in turn impacts the companies, the users of those projects when it comes to how they can, you know, trust those projects to, you know, push their products out to production or to hands of their users. And foundations are there to actually help the projects from these aspects, like. Foundations could be considered as you know, organizations providing logistical support, community support, legal support to projects. Jenkins has been there since 2010, even early, while it was Hudson, it was working fine. But if you think Jenkins, Jenkins was originally paid by, by Kosuke Kawaguchi, who was a CloudBees employee, and it's kind of made it look like it is mainly driven by CloudBees. It's kind of Yes, it's an open source project by support by one organization that kind of made things a bit tricky for Jenkins community to tell the users like, no, it is not about cloud. This is an open source project with many contributors from different organizations and different, you know, projects. We are not cloud this thing. And then Jenkins actually triggered the conversation around formation of continuous data foundation and they joined. And now the continuous data foundation supports Jenkins project as well as others, with all kinds of Things like if they have a legal issue with trademark, CD Foundation helps them with. If they need to renew their domain name, CD Foundation deals with that. If they need to pay Azure bill, for example, CD Foundation pays those bills. And these things are uh, done with the help of the members. They pay membership fee, and we take that fee and we pay whatever needed for our communities. In addition to running some events and so on. As I was talking about projects, these are the projects currently under CD Foundation and Jenkins. I talked about Jenkins. And when CD Foundation was formed around 2019, March, there were four founding projects Jenkins, Jenkins X, Tecton, and Spinnaker. And all these projects are pretty well established. Like Tecton was young at that time, but now it is one of our budget projects. Over the last three, four years, we added five new projects, and the youngest project we have now is Persia. And all these projects work together on the CD Foundation, but at the same time, they are kind of independent. They work with their you know, technology area, but on foundation level, they collaborate with each other as well. 
I'm just to summarize what these projects are, I am skipping CD events because uh, Emily will talk about that. Jenkins, Jenkins X, uh, Spinnaker, and Tekton, they are kind of continuous integration, continuous orchestrators. So you can use Jenkins for continuous integration, for example, you can Spinnaker for continuous de delivery and deployment to different clouds. Uh, Screwdriver, Tekton, yeah, they are also kind of orchestrators. Or tell you, this is a microservices. Uh, marketplace or framework, it's kind of evolving at the moment and bring some uh, evidence late stuff and software supply chain things, so they will probably change what kind of project they are. Persia is a, a package distribution network. Shiprite is a Kubernetes native build framework. And CD events is an event uh, protocol for continuous delivery. In addition to uh, the projects, as I mentioned, in addition to having cross pollination and cross collaboration happening between community members coming from different companies, same things happening across different projects as well. And that happens mainly through six. And we have currently five different special interest groups. And as you can see, these special interest groups focus on different aspects like best practices. Uh, special interest group works with developing and improving best practices. Interval special interest group works with interoperability aspects of continuous delivery, Iran SIG work with, works with uh, events in you know, continuous delivery and how it helps with interoperability, software supply chain work with software supply chain aspects, and MLOps is around machine learning. And these, again, these six get participation projects or some other people who might not be part of any project. So these six give you a chance to join the community as well. Interoperability. Again, Emil will hopefully go into details in this while he talks about CDMS, but we are working on improving the interoperability with an ecosystem, and we are seeing a really encouraging signs recently, and it is now going beyond CD Foundation. We are working with different uh, projects coming from CNCF and other places. Hopefully, near future, we'll have some uh, adoption of our projects there. So for supply chain, Again, this is another topic everyone is talking about, like Log4j happened like 2021 December, if I'm not mistaken, and everyone was like jumping up and down if they are using Log4j, which version of they are using and so on. And OpenSF, Open Source Security Foundation, actually started doing more detailed work around that in different areas like build, packaging, and distribution. And when it comes to continuous integration and continuous theory, we felt the need to contribute those efforts from continuous theory perspective because in the end, the pipelines, the production systems, they actually take the code, turn them into artifacts and push them to production. And such conversations were happening a lot within the open source communities. So we want to take part in those conversations and bring our expertise to those conversations from continuous theory perspective. Reference architecture is another effort driven by the best practices. Uh, this effort is going slowly, unfortunately, but our purpose is to come up some kind of with some kind of blueprint to give different organizations to look at something as a reference and start you know, imp implementing that using different open source technologies. So instead of they start instead of them starting from scratch, they can look at CDF reference architecture and take it either as whole or pieces of it and get some kind of high start. Best practice I talked about that. So there is a website for that bestpractice.cd.foundation. You can look at those best practices from the website and contribute to them if you want to. Some other stuff. Again, foundation, in addition to providing like financial support, legal support, and so on, we also have our projects and our community with their outreach efforts because the work they are doing, they need to be taught. And we support them in different ways. We publish white papers, we publish reports, we publish user stories. As you see, uh, we have one from Ericsson, which we published in May, and another one was published in February from Fidelity. We also have some workshop series, as well as some uh, more panel like uh, recordings. We discuss different topics. And these help our projects and help our commit to talk about what they are doing and, you know, tell the world what's happening within communities and ask for people to use their projects or become contributors. 
And finally, Iran events and the most recent one called CDCon was actually co-located with Open Source Summit North America. And we organized this together with CNCF where we put CDCon together with GitOpsCon bringing these different communities together. Again, this also helps commit to meet with each other in person and discuss the future. And there was a project summit around CD events there as well. I think that is all I had. Yep. Any questions about the foundation or projects? I can share the slides so you can see how you can join and so on. Would it be possible for Eiffel to join CDF? What would be the pros and cons of that? Maybe we came back to that after the yeah. presentation about CD events and the so we can relate it to, to what already exists there. Yeah. Good question, and I intended actually to ask Fatih that as well myself. <laughs> uh, so we can discuss that soon. Yeah. So how do city sort of refer to the sort of balance of different things? Yes. I think depends. I think. You talk about history of CD events. Yeah, a little, a little bit, yeah, very yeah, shortly. Yeah, no, uh, I didn't go, actually, special interest group interoperability. While I was at Ericsson, I founded that group in 2020. And we were like talking, like Emil, me, Christopher, Hallam, we were talking about like how we can go and talk about this topic. And over time, uh, I think after third or fourth month within special interest group interoperability, an events work stream was created under special interest group interoperability to look at using events as a viable solution to interoperability challenges, and that comes from Eiffel. And then that work stream turned into a special interest group events, and then a project was formed, which Emma will talk about, CD events. So CD events and CD events, they continue looking to interoperability from using events for interoperability and some other things, but interoperability seek is still there and looks at other aspects. So you can take part in both of them while you work with events, you take part in CD events and CD events. And if you are working to some kind of DSL stuff, pipeline standardization, visualization, and some kind of, how to say, standardization or interoperability, more than just connecting systems to each other, but actually interoperability on vertical style, then you can continue working on interoperability. It's kind of interoperability doesn't look into events anymore because it has its own SIG and project. And one artifact that still lives in the interoperability SIG is the vocabulary document, uh, which was called the Rosetta Stone for CSE in the beginning, uh, where we try to homogenize the name, the, the language spoken when we talk about uh, things in CSE systems, which is, I think, a basic concept to achieve interoperability, regardless of if it's using events or some other thing. And Eric was into that yesterday as well in, our, in the presentation about Eiffel, that the, one of the very good things that comes from this, if we have a common language, is that we can also use it as humans to start talking to each other in an interoperable way between organizations, let's say, not just interoperability between tools, but also between organizations in, and people. Uh, so that artifact still lives in the yeah. interoperability SIG. That's one thing. I don't think there's a roadmap when it will be done, but there are slowly being new projects or new tools added to that landscape of vocabulary input, so to say. Uh, yeah, it's like, I just want this is a heads up. Uh, interoperability seek is, uh, they start working with their roadmap. So if you want to, you know, see what they're up to, or if you want to call and influence, it is time to join discussion they recently changed the uh, chair i think uh, someone from apple became co-chair and he has really good ideas so it's time to look into interoperability if you want to see what they're up to yep 
let's move on to city events. Uh, so you, you can, I think it's automatically quite a, okay. finding me. If you just step back, then that, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, so uh, what is city events and how does it relate to Eiffel? Just some short history, then Fatih already said some words about the, the, the background and the history there. Uh, first, it's currently chaired by me and the guy from IBM, Andrea Frittori. Uh, should be two T and one L, Frittori, I think it is. Anyway, uh, so there is this special interest group for events and also the project, city events. Uh, there is no other governance of the project so far than the SIG events chair, <laughs> really. Uh, so there is like, I mean, the SIG events is like a bootstrap governance committee for the city events project. So it's, I mean, both of them are somehow controlled by me and Andrea at this moment. Uh, we have frequent meetings, both in the SIG specifically and also on the city events project, which we call the vocabulary work group for the project, the, yeah, the protocol. So the history, uh, it started as a work stream inside the SIG interoperability in 2020. It became its own special interest group in February 2021, and the project City Events was launched 2022, early there. Uh, some short words about the ecosystem around City Events. There is uh, There are three different SDKs at the moment, one in written in Go, one in Python, one in Java. There is a proof of concept, which is quite dated now, but uh, we have ideas to update it. Uh, it anyway, shows how to inter interact between Tecton, uh, Captain and Spinnaker and Jenkins in some sense. And also actually there is a variant of it which also interoperates with Eiffel. Uh, so to see how these tools can interoperate with each other. Contributors to the City Events project are from many different companies. Some of the most active ones are mentioned here. There are others as well. Uh, Okay, so the protocol itself, uh, why is it there and what is it? So it's intended, uh, at least from, from Ericsson perspective and from Eiffel community perspective, it's expected to be compatible in some sense with Eiffel. Uh, we wouldn't be there, I would say, if we wouldn't see that there is some future where either Eiffel could be migrating towards this or could be working together with this in some way. Uh, if there will be like total duplicates and no good way to, to transfer between them, I don't think that there is a viable future for our collaboration here. Uh, so one, there are several differences from what I feel is today. And one is that uh, there is a binding on seed events towards cloud events uh, and cloud events is a generic event infrastructure well generic layer infrastructure for, for event sending it's if we would compare it to, to Eiffel it is more or less like the meta layer of Eiffel events uh, so those of you who are a bit more familiar with Eiffel event structures, the, all events have the same meta information in them or the same meta properties, uh, which then in some sense could be seen as a uh, like a header on the Eiffel protocol. Uh, and more or less that's how the cloud events is used on seed events as well. It's more or less, you can see it more or less as a header on the, the, the seed event specification, which makes it possible to to federate and transport these events onto all different infrastructures that cloud events supports, which are many. Uh, so you're not anymore bound to just having uh, the events sent on RabbitMQ, which we are today on Eiffel. <clears throat> uh, and well, so there could be different uh, event or messaging brokers on your infrastructure, as long as they are compatible with cloud events, the same CD event could be transported all over this uh, intricate web of, of uh, messaging systems. Uh, event types in CD events have a uh, subject and a predicate. So the, the all event types are then divided in that, that way. We have something 
slightly similar in Eiffel, and I will come back to that in, an, in a se separate session today. Uh, but here it's a more explicit way that we use it with subjects and predicates. Uh, so these are two examples of events that exist in seed events, artifact published and test case run started. Uh, we'll come back to some examples soon. So this is one slide that I have stolen from Andrea when he is presenting seed events, which is about the two different main use cases for seed events or for events in a CI/CD system. Uh, and all the, the uh, the top level arrows here, they show uh, the interoperability, more or less, they, they focus on the interoperability aspect of CD events. So you have your, your pipeline system with different steps and uh, components handling those steps. Uh, they could then send events to say that this has happened. Uh, and the intention from system perspective is so that some other tool in your chain could then listen to those events and start their activities. So there might not be any explicit calls on these dashed arrows here. They just would rather be triggered by, by events. Uh, so that's the, the interoperability aspect, and you're, of course, familiar with these concepts already. Uh, and then we have the observability aspect where it's like a one directional communication from the messaging system out to some consumers and the consumers themselves don't really propagate any events back to the broker. Uh, and here's where the observability use case come, it comes into the picture of events in the system. So for example, a, a human can view what happens in the system. We can have a database storing everything that has happened. We can calculate metrics on the events and we can notify users that, hey, this has happened, go do something with it. Uh, yeah, so these are not news for you, but just for your information, this is how it's also presented on, on when you talk about seed events. Some short words about what releases we have had so far. The first release was in October last year, uh, along with one of the CDF conferences, 0 0.1. There we had the core events, uh, so more or less what we should refer to as the activity events in Eiffel. Uh, we have some SEM events there. We have events for uh, notifying about builds and artifacts and test events uh, and deployments as well was already there from the beginning. Then we had another release in March this year where incident events were included. And another one just a month away. Uh, where we had some updates to the test events from one new company which was involved in CD events, uh, TestCube. So that is 2023. Yeah, sorry, 2023. <laughs> yeah, I'm ahead of time. <laughs> so, wrong on the slide, I will change that. Uh, thank you, Matthias. And also uh, signed artifact events. Uh, so, an, oh, sorry, an artifact signed event, a specific event for saying that this artifact has now been signed. Uh, it's not part of the artifact published event, but rather a new, new event. Uh, we are currently working on, well, the most prominent part we're working on right now is connecting events. So I will come back to that, but we don't today have a very good explicit way of relating events to each other. So the link model in Eiffel is not yet implemented in Siri events. There are other ways to connect events, but they are not as explicit as an Eiffel. So we are working on a way to, to make sure that happens. Which you might realize that that's quite crucial for Eiffel, that we have something that at least, is, at least resembles what we do in Eiffel, so we can fulfill the same use cases. Uh, this is a list of all event types in CD events at the moment. I don't intend to go through them in detail, but you can see that there are different categories of events. Uh, the core events I mentioned, pipeline and task run events, they're called. We have source control events. Uh, we mentioned that yesterday on the session there. There's uh, branch events, repository events and change events. Uh, then for CI, the CI bucket, uh, there are build events and artifact events. So CD events currently has a specific subtype of uh, activity, I would say, which is the build. Uh, then we have the testing events, 
which are also then kind of activities. Uh, so test case run, test tweet run, and a separate event for the output, uh, which might be published after something uh, in test suite or test case has been finished later in time. Uh, then we have CD events, continuous delivery or deployment events uh, about the environment and the service which could be deployed. So this is the service deployed here is related to the artifact deployed in Eiffel. Continuous operation events where we have included now the incident event. So when some incident occurs in your system, you could uh, send this kind of events. Uh, I will relate them to, to Eiffel, uh, I think, soon as well. Yeah, come back to that. Uh, one comment there. Yes. Go back to that slide. Uh, so here, when you when they have the subcategories here, it's environment dot created, environment dot modified. Yes. So that is the way to read it. Great. I should maybe shown those in, in green and red because it's yeah it's subject and predicate so the subjects are the first terms and then the predicate are the uh, per event so the great question do you have anything related to like confidence levels or no something? we don't yet uh and uh that's something that we should add yeah exactly so i realized that or realized but i noticed it yesterday in our discussions that um, it's of course something very important for us in Eiffel, and uh, we should have something similar here. So now it's good time uh, until it has come in to start thinking about how it should look in this context, what it should be called and those things. And there's no composition amounts either. Yeah. Composition is fine. Right. OK, so here's an example of a CD event. Uh, it's a JSON blob, uh, at least how it's normally laid out. Uh, we have a context and we have a subject. Uh, so this is, nothing in this is cloud events related really yet. I will just come to an example of that soon. So this is the, the CD events part of it. Uh, still there is a context, which anyway looks like the meta in, in, in Eiffel quite a lot. Uh, it has some fields that you might understand what they are for. It's quite similar to the, the Eiffel meta. Well, I will actually do it this way. So this is similar to the meta object. Uh, and then the subject is like the data part more or less in, uh, in Eiffel. It's quite similar to that. Without going into all details, because I don't have time for that. Uh, there are two different versions specified here, might, which you might just wonder about what they are. So. The first version here is actually the version of the full specification of the full group of, of all events. Uh, that's nothing, nothing that we have in Eiffel today. Uh, and I am not really sure what the use case for this is in CD events. I mean, this, this is another way of doing it than we do in Eiffel. So here we bound, bind it to a specific edition of, of the CD event spec, or we say when it was introduced rather. Uh, so that's a difference. Uh, and there's another version here, which is then what we have also in Eiffel, but we have it in a separate field. Here it's included in the type field. So we have the event type version as part of the type field. That's one difference. Uh, if I then expand this into the uh, cloud event, there are different ways to, to bind this to cloud events, but one way is to bind it with a pure JSON hierarchical structure. And it's the, the easiest way to explain what it is really. So the thing up here then, this is not anymore the, the CD event, this is the pure cloud event header to the event, which has uh, fields that are very similar to, again, to the context in the CD event and to the meta in Eiffel. Uh, and the event type is the same. So a lot of information is duplicated between these as well. But for federation purposes in on cloud events level, so to say, this, this data here is used. Then there is a data object which actually contains the full CD event. So that's how those, yeah. Like an event then in terms of if you're using it with CD event, you only 
send like the CD event, and then if you would like to use cloud event, then you add that on, or is the whole thing like a CD? Event? The whole is what it, whole the thing is what is. If you look at the bus, the whole thing is there. Okay. So there is no pure seed event on any bus anywhere. It's always bound to some bus uh, header protocol, or we should call it. Right. So, so it, it needs to be bound to something, and then this example is how it's bound to cloud events. So technically, we can actually send Eiffel also. Cloud yeah, we, we could probably encapsulate Eiffel within the same thing. We have just not done it. So, I mean, we have been we have said that we should probably show how this could be done with cloud events, but we haven't tried that out and we don't have an environment for trying it out and, and so on. So it shouldn't be a major thing, I think, to do. Uh, and just as you see here, we also here duplicate the meta. That's one thing that I was a bit concerned about, but we already have the meta. What should we do with that then in Eiffel when we bind it to cloud events? But for seed events, we anyway did that. I mean, we already include the same things here as well. So. But why? I mean, why do you need to? It's have for convenience in some way. I mean, they, for example, when when we develop SDKs for for CD events, we only want to care about the the CD events part of the event, so to say. Uh, and there, we also need this information that exists in the header in some way. Uh, that's one reason. And another reason is that there are other ways to actually bind this to cloud events. Uh, this is the JSON way, the structured way, I think it's called. Uh, if you would go the another way, these, these information here could be sent as HTTP parameters instead of being part of a JSON blob. So the cloud events supports different ways of laying out the information on the in the message or in the yeah, on an HTTP bus reference, for example, or interface. Uh, and in that case, you wouldn't see this cloud events things at all in the JSON blob. Uh, so there are different reasons for it. This is the current best thing in list. You could say that we are a little bit duplicating things. Uh, most people probably duplicate things when you send it on. We have the type uh, in, in the meta type in Echo, but you probably will also use it in the binding keys in order to sort and order it. So that could be kind of like a comparison to the duplication. Yeah. 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 Some duplication there as well. Yeah. 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 So that's how I also want to see it as a, a header on top of the yeah, like a package header. Uh, there's another version here then, also in the cloud events, but this is not the CD events version. This is rather the cloud events specification version. So this is the version of dealing with how these fields should be laid out. Uh, I think there might be many discussions and questions here, but we have a bit shorter time. So we, let's rush through it and then we can see if we have more time to, to discuss it. Well, I mean, actually, yes. we do have some time since the next mm. session. I won't use all 30 minutes. Oh, yeah, if yeah, you yeah, want yeah. 15 <clears throat> minutes of me, that's, that's sort of like, We can take 15 minutes from you, that's fine. Yeah, <clears throat> yep. I'm very generous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if people are interested in this, we'll sure prolong it. Uh, so adoption and collaboration. As I mentioned before, there are currently three different SDKs. Uh, the most mature one I would say is in Golang. Go. Uh, there is one in Java and one in Python. They are getting there. Um, tools adoptions. There are currently two tools that have published support, I would say, for uh, CD events. One is the Jenkins plugin provided by Fidelity, as Fatih was talking about before as well. Uh, so that's published on the Jenkins.io uh, repo. Then Tekton has an experimental support for CD events as well. Then there are things in progress, and the Spinnaker one I think is quite close to getting there, uh, and the Test Cube one as well. So there is an RFC actually created by people from Ericsson initially, or Ericsson Software Technology, uh, to get Spinnaker to be able to uh, send CD events. Well, is it send or trigger on? One of them will come before the other one. I'm not sure exactly which one it is right now. Uh, yeah, so two actually two RFCs, one for sending seed events and one for triggering on them. And then TestCube is this uh, is a test tool, a cloud native test orchestration system, uh, which 
is which uh, have contributed to the new the updated test events in seed events and they are also adopting the full seed events spec now or the parts <coughs> that they are related to but to mention some projects that we are collaborating with uh, harbor Dax, argo and we have collaboration with other communities as well we have collaboration with another uh, technical group in uh, cncf the uh, Technical advisory group, I think it's pronounced the expression is there, uh, app delivery, which concerns about how to deliver applications in a cloud native context. Uh, open telemetry, there are some discussions started there. Also, open mainframe project, maybe you can say some more words about that if there's time. And then value stream management as well. We are in discussions with uh, people from the value stream management consortium about how to propagate data from a full value stream flow, which is a lot larger, I would say, than the CICD flow. It starts a lot earlier when a customer has an idea of a feature that they want some when some some time to get implemented. And it really never ends, but it's one part of it is when uh, the feature is available to the use to the customer, and the customer can say if they have found it valuable or not to them. It's not just deployed, but it's also customer expectations fulfilled on those things. So there are discussions how we can collaborate with the events in that area as well. So some uh, mentioning about the events types. Uh, we already had this question there about uh, what do I say the uh, Conference level, for example, and uh, I've marked the ones here which have overlapping event types, and you see some of them exist in Seed events, but not in Eiffel, and, and vice versa. But these are how they relate to each other, more or less. Uh, so the activity events in Eiffel could be related to the pipeline run and task run, and also the build event in, in Seed events, which is the type of an artifact, uh, sorry, activity in Eiffel terms. Uh, source changes are somewhat equivalent test case test suite events are somewhat equivalent artifact events as well we have the environment event and we also have the concept of a service uh, subject in seed events and yesterday we talked about branches the CM branches uh, we also have the repository event in seed event um, and then in Eiffel we have this test execution recipe collection created event which does not exist in, in seed events. Uh, we have flow context definitions and composition definition event, and also issue defined event, which really doesn't exist in, in seed events. We have though something called incident event, as I mentioned before, which is not really the same as an issue defined event. Uh, there is a predicate on the incident uh, subject, which is incident um, resolved, I think which is very much related to the issue verified event in Eiffel. But yeah, the, an issue and an incident is not really the same thing. So it's not really synonyms, I would say. They're related. An incident created is more like an announcement created event. Uh, OK, so that's short about that. Comparing then seed events with Eiffel side by side like this. Without going into details, you can see this afterwards, maybe. Uh, but there are a lot of similarities, but also some differences. Uh, I think really valuable to point out here, I think. Uh, was this the last slide? Yeah, it was. Um, thing to point out there. No. So, I mean, as you've already heard, I'm quite active in, in both Eiffel and in seed events. Uh, so I would say Eiffel community, at least through me, has some influence over seed events. But I would like help to get like better, uh, better influence, of course, and uh, at least help out in, in reviewing pull requests and uh, approving the ideas that come up there. One important thing now will be these connected events uh, or connecting events initiative to make sure that we get something there that is really valuable for us as well 
uh, so we see that there is a, a good comparison between Eiffel and, and CD events there. Um, there are some integrations, as I've been mentioned before. Matthias mentioned this yesterday. There is a repository for an Eiffel translator to CD events back and forth. And there's also a repository for a demo where Eiffel and CD events are used together. This is a very early stage as well, the current stage of these, but uh, the intention is there to, to make sure that we have something to relate these two protocols to each other. And it's currently under the Eiffel community GitHub organization. Yeah, I think I rushed this a bit, but I hope you got some parts of it. Was it something you felt was missing, CD events related? Something I missed out, Matthias, you think? It's really good if you come and have like help and you could just be like reading the spec and having comments about the spec or uh, <clears throat> having asking questions is always a good thing. Uh, lots of people there. I personally find the current spec a little bit harder to read than the Eiffel one. Maybe yep. because I'm used to Eiffel one. But um, it's good because more people get involved and have more eyes on it. So if you have time over, if you just go and read them and discuss them. Do so, join the meetings if you want to. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're too shy, then contact him. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really good if you join into the meetings. Yeah. Uh, so we can have more eyes and views on this. But the meetings are still at like 6 p.m. Central so European time. Uh, currently, Fine. we meet between 5 and 6 p.m., yes, normally. Uh, we also have one meeting every other week on Mondays, uh, 12 to 1, lunchtime. Swedish time. You're really nailing the perfect yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have participants from uh, Asia sometimes, also from Australia, actually. So they are in the middle of the night, regardless of when we have our meetings. And uh, of course, some people from uh, West Coast America. So they cannot join, join our lunch meeting, but they can join our evening meetings because then it's like eight o'clock their time, morning, or maybe nine. Depends on if it's summertime or not. Um, yeah, so yeah, unfortunately, that's the drawback of having a global community. Yeah. I mean, if it, I think it would be really uh, useful when we're discussing stuff as sort of change related uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that and try to understand, OK, so how have you talked about it or thought yeah. about it and uh, to get some more uh, maybe perspectives? Yeah, yeah I would say the the discussions behind the event types, as you've seen here, uh, are not at all as detailed as they are in Eiffel. So there seems to be quite a lot of events here, but the, their contents haven't been discussed by many people at all and uh, haven't been proven in any battle anywhere. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if the spec here would change quite drastically when people start using this and see that it might not really fit the purpose that was intended for it. Uh, so I don't think that, well, of course, we should look into the SM events that are here. Uh, we should rather affect how they are evolving than taking inspiration from them. Of course, we can see how they are done and, and see if we can do something similar. Uh, they might solve some problems in the SM area that we don't have with Eiffel, uh, but uh, yeah. There are options or possibilities uh, to improve and to affect how the CD events protocol is evolving uh, quite a lot, more than in Eiffel, because it's not yet used in production. Even though there are published uh, implementations on top of CD events already, CD events hasn't passed version 1.0 yet. Uh, so until we get to 1.0, we are quite OK with introducing non backwards compatible changes to the protocol. But after 1.0, we hope to have it in such a good shape, so we don't need to do that very often. Are there any reference implementations that send seed events without the cloud events header? No. Uh, no. I mean, all of them are bound to cloud events, really. Uh, but but then it's up to the, I would say, it's up to your SDK to say how the binding is done. Uh, so the SDK that is that you use to send the, the CD event, you as a user don't really need to care. 
you use the SDK and then it's bound in the way that the SDK is capable of. Uh, so if the SDK, which normally is a uh, uses a cloud events library internally, <laughs> uh, if that has capabilities to to send it over other protocols than AMQP or whatever, then it, it will do so if you have that infrastructure in your system. So you, as a user of CD events, you shouldn't really need to care. Of course, when you set up your system with CD events, you should somehow know yeah. what, what buses and what uh, infrastructure you have, of course. But And then another thing you said, you said that, that Faithful was in some way, we were only able to send events using WebMQ, which is, I guess, no, I mean, that, that's the only way we do it. I mean, we don't have any other services published than the ones using yeah, yeah, WebMQ yeah. today. There is no... No, the, the protocol, not the protocol itself is not at all bound to WebMQ. You're right. I guess uh, Sapia would then be Sapia would then the reference architecture or something. Yeah. That one talks about the yeah. and yeah. about the binding keys. Um, so I would say it's uh, it's a little bit pro with with uh, building on top of cloud events because then you have a, a like an independent platform, and so you can probably take event and go over from Kafka to Kafka and route it pretty easily between there. Mm. Yeah, so. Building on top, I think, is a, it's a problem because you don't need to deal with the kind of like low level ones that we have done mm -hmm. in April. I have a question about the timestamps. I saw that there yeah. they had a different you format. That. Yeah. Uh, what is that in part of the spec uh, or? And it's it's human readable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. which is a good thing, I think. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, I think we save some bytes in Eiffel by having a, a epoch millisecond timestamp instead of a human readable string. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the only reason no, for having it. <laughs> I think the the main idea with Eiffel when we created it was uh, this is uh, something that a computer can easily read because you don't have yeah. to translate it. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's intended for computer reading, not for human reading. Yeah, so that's why we have it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. So, uh, and actually, in in the event repository that Ericsson provides, uh, I'm not sure if it's also in the API there, but it's a possibility to read a readable format. Yeah. Uh, which would then, when you then get the JSON on all the events, the only difference from a raw event is that the timestamps are then human readable translated, so you get them in human readable form. Uh, so you can actually have, there's an API then to the ER. If you query it as a human, you will be able to read it with real timestamps. I, I think I requested that to remove, not, not included in the official spec. It's not? No, I don't, I, I, I know I requested its removal because I thought it was crazy. Okay. Um, but it's apparently yes, useful if you want to yeah, um, see real events. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, it can be discussed. But I, I have another question about the artifacts. Um, yeah. I note that both artifact published and artifact signed doesn't include the URL. There is a source URL, but that appears to be something else, and otherwise it's just the Perl. So how do you get hold of the artifact URL? Can't answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, as I said, I mean, the, the, <laughs> the events are there and they have some structure, but they lack probably quite a lot of useful information. Quite a lot of important information as well, I would, I would guess. Uh, there is, as in Eiffel, there's a custom data field. It's actually called custom data in seed events as well, uh, thanks to Eiffel. <laughs> uh, so, when the, in the example, in the real life examples I've seen, there is, of course, a lot of custom data to handle such things. Not just that, but a lot of different data. So, uh, obviously, if those are always needed, those fields, then we'll they will end up in the spec as well. Yeah. But it's more that you haven't really dug into the events fully, or is it more that you're maybe choosing to slim down the... No, we're not choosing to slim anything down. Rather, today we duplicate more information than Eiffel does. Since we don't have these uh, references, we'd rather duplicate like SEM information into the artifact events and such things. Uh, so I would say it's it's just that it's not been proven in battle yet, really. Uh, 
maybe this is not how how, how the seed events specification is presented in other communities. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm too pessimistic when I present it here, but um, I mean that, that's at least my honest view of it. Uh, but there is, I mean, there is a an expectation anyway from CDF that what we have now shouldn't be changed too much. I mean, that, that it should be quite mature. Uh, I have a concern that it might not be, but yeah, we'll see. The question, if something that is 0.4 is mm. true, I don't see how that is. I guess you use quite a lot of open source tools that are zero, not, still not 1.0, yeah, but, zero, but and you use them as if they are mature. Yeah, but they kind of a, oh, might just be me, the engineer, looking at semantic versioning and so on, and something that's structured always oh, usually not very. No, no, and that's the reason. That's something that I have tried to force here, that we start with O oh, something, yeah. because uh, I would like to see that we get something quite useful before we publish it at 1.0, because then we won't be able to change it as much. So that's maybe my fault. Or that that we are still in O dot something. Showing that this is not probably something that should. Be yeah, yeah, it's yeah, of course. We should yeah. Use it and experiment. We should. Yeah. And I think we have stated that in our documentation quite quite well as well somewhere at least that this is still not a published 1.0 version of it. So right. you should expect it to change. I just want to highlight something like no. We all here are pretty competent in with this type of way of constructing pipelines, making tools and technologies work with each other. And this goes back to what Paul was like. When we start with CDF with special interest for interoperability, people didn't even know what interoperability meant in CD context. They always confused integration with interoperability. They said, oh, Jenkins works with spinning the pretty well. Why do we need to discuss this? We are happy. But it is just tool tools. And just orchestrators. If you think about pipelines, you have your SCM repositories, artifact repositories, test frameworks, visualization tools, event repositories, orchestrators. The, the problem becomes so huge. So, first thing we did within special interest group interval to explain what interval means. So, Emil and Matthias, they are pretty active in CDUNs. Some people don't even still understand what interval means. So, the like conversation hasn't come to like what should be in these events that far in some areas they, because some people are just joining and oh this makes sense how can I learn more and they bring their ideas and some people say oh we also have events within our company so that makes things a bit more challenging and also more beneficial because then whatever might result in all these conversations and what goes into spec will have broader coverage not just a few use case, but for a few industries, but broader uh, context. And also it has its adoption because all these people have connections with different communities. And instead of you creating plugins yourselves or writing scripts around integrating things or making spec available in certain things, they become problems for upstream communities. So when you pull down Jenkins, for example, it will the plugin comes to Jenkins. You don't have to develop it yourself. Or if you are using a proprietary tool, an artifact repository manager like Artifact or Nexus, they will probably be provided by the vendors themselves instead of you creating those things yourself. So that's kind of pros and cons. Like you can continue doing things in a smaller context, but then you have to carry all this burden yourself. That is the beauty of open source. Like if you have more eyes, more participation, more contribution, then obviously. You might lose some of the things you have with Eiffel, but that might actually help you get that thing adopted by a certain project, like the projects Emil highlight, Largo, Flux, Harbor, they are used by many. Also, if we take ourselves out of cloud native context, open mainframe is an interesting example there because sometimes there is a concern for mainframes too. So that gives you even more support for the specification you are developing because IBM is there, Broadcom is there, SUSE is there, and they all have their developers and they start talking to other communities which we may not be able to reach out to. It's kind of, you need to think this a bit more broadly than just, you know, in CD context. And that is a good connection point to perhaps the software supply chain topic. Yes. Like OpenSSF, everyone is working with supply chain security now, but 
what we realized, as I mentioned, they are looking at these individual stages in people pipeline, for example, build stage. They focus on fixing things with build stage, packaging, distribution. But there is very little conversation around how to orchestrate these different stages and how this interoperability actually makes it possible to secure software supply chain. Because if you don't have interoperability available across all these different technologies, then there are different types of ways of expressing data and you have to deal with all these different types of data yourselves perhaps that cd events or i for event driven pipelines or event based approach brings up additional you know capabilities because like especially with i event links and hopefully cd events will have links there as well you can have this chain of custody which you can you know track back from artifact that is actually deployed in production back to source code level and lock 4 j type of issues might have been easier to deal with because you have this full trace with back to source of that thing but if you don't have such interval in place then you have to go and dig this information all these different systems because we don't have a common way to express this thing and the other thing is like policy enforcement now you have this open policy framework there open policy agent there other policy frameworks but then you have to enforce policies in different ways but if you look at cd events and if you use cd events events could have to trigger with policy checks or uh, incidents you highlight incidents could be you know like incident response could be triggered using events or even if you think about AI for example you can use events for anomaly detection as well if you have this type of you know standardized approach to establishing pipelines and so on and now take we take ourselves out of CD context, the value stream management, then we have even broader coverage there. So again, it's not specific supply chain, it's not specific CD. I think it is good to dream sometimes. And I've been talking about this since 2016 because I am coming from Ericsson. I work with Eiffel a lot. And I realized this is something everyone should be looking to, should be contributing to. And it's been seven years for me. I'm talking about this thing. And now finally, things are happening with this adoption, like Fidel talking about events, Apple talking about events. And I think link proposal is coming from Apple. Apple. Yeah. IBM is contributing. So the opportunity is so huge here. And obviously, you are investing in Eiffel, you are using Eiffel, and then will highlight there could be, will be some kind of some translation between Eiffel and CD events. I suggest you to get to CD events, like take part in conversations. If you don't have time, read the specification and just bring that during your IFL conversations or directly bring those to CD events. So you have a chance to influence this. It is still early, point four is not there. And whatever you notice right now, these things could be easily brought into community. And then you help shape the specification and become made better. No. So the Opportunity is so huge there, and hopefully it won't take seven years. It will hopefully be in a year or two. Yeah. This should really be adopted because four major projects are three plus test script. Test script is small compared to Spinnaker and Jenkins and Tecton. But if those projects are adopted, the others will look at them and say <coughs> something's happening here. We don't want to be lagging behind, fear of missing out. You know that is the biggest point to sell this thing, and that's why. CDF is putting a lot of effort on promoting the work with CD events and other projects adopting CD events. So I think we will not have any time for another subject before lunch, but uh, should we ask, try to ask, answer the question from Magnus as well? If Eiffel should be contributed to CDF or not? Do you have a thought through take on that? <laughs> we had some conversations around that years ago. The thing is like, well, obviously, <clears throat> I'm not deciding which project should be, you know, accepted on a technology side committee accepts those things. I already mentioned like SAS, this SAS analytics company, you know that. And they, I don't know how they found out, but they found out CD events, I think due to software supply chain sick. And one of the guys that Brad Smith, he st started talking about, oh, I've been working with event-based framework within SAS for years. 
we have our own event specification. And probably there are others doing similar stuff. So you can obviously bring Eiffel. Others can also bring Eiffel, uh, their event specifications. And technology side community might approve all of them. But then you are spreading the community team. Everyone is working with their own specification. One specification is adopted by Jenkins and Tekton, the other is adopted by Argo and Flux. Then you, you are not solving the problem. You are simply, you know, replicating this XKCD, you know, cartoon, like 11 standard. So I think Eiffel, would, yes, it can be proposed, but this was a conscious, conscious decision not to do that earlier, because then you are not imposing people your own standard. You are letting community to come up with their own way of learning this, their own way of, you know, understanding the problem, what we are trying to solve. And it may take longer than having Eiffel there. If Eiffel was there, then we wouldn't be talking about these things, but Eiffel might not have been adopted by the projects. Now you are giving people to come and influence that. Then they feel ownership instead of feeling, oh, this comes from Ericsson or Sweden. And, you know, again, psychological things. And yeah, you were part of technology side community. You voted for Percy, for example. You know how things work. I can always propose to CTFs, and it might get accepted. But then what happens? No one can tell. Maybe I becomes the thing, and CD events phase out, or CD events continues to be the thing while I runs like today. Just a reflection. I, I see all of this. I'll just take the language as an analogy. We have English, Swedish, Mandarin, and all the sorts of language. I think one of these will become English, which is adopted by most. Yeah. With your presentation, it seems you want CD even to be the English uh, more adopted. Uh, but then other language, that doesn't mean other language cannot exist. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think having CD events as, as English is the most, to me at least, the most probable future. Yeah. Uh, but I would like Eiffel to keep being there as long as it has its own value at least and, yeah. and its own, of course, its own user base. And as long as not everyone else is adopting CD events, then it should be there. Uh, if if the Eiffel, Eiffel kids start learning CD events in, in daycare, and from low age, then of yeah. course they don't need to continue talking Eiffel yeah. with others. They can talk city events instead. So, but I think that would be not a very quick transition. So they need to coexist and somehow either translate or yeah, in some way coexist. Uh, yeah. I can just give uh, because I came as a user or consumer who is looking to invest on uh, event based things. Uh, and if I have to invest today, well, let's say, being part of Ericsson, I'll start with Eiffel because infrastructure is there. And my use case is my CI is not only inside Ericsson. We have now partnered with Google, so the product is going from Ericsson to Google. And then Google is talking about CD events in our discussions. So probably that will be the case. And maybe in future, slowly, transition the Eiffel to CD events or both exist. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So R&D, CI, Eiffel, and then the, the, the other company we go to CD. Yes. Thank you. So then from uh, Eiffel perspective, it might be, I mean, in our interest to influence some parts, so it can be possible to do that. Yeah, translation, I guess. That, that's maybe one of my main goes with being there really to, to make sure that we can influence that much so it's transition at some point. The, the different ideas don't diverge too much. <clears throat> One reflection from looking at Ericsson where we have our <coughs> internal protocol to the open source version and uh, trying to migrate between the two is that if you have an organization that has something inside of it it's not too easy to shift over to something else. Uh, so I guess the reason that somebody shifts over would be that there is, for example, a lot of tools that already work. There is out-of-the-box support. 
then you have a pullover. Uh, so, for example, I don't think that Ericsson will be translating over to, to Citibank if not, there is a lot of, of pull there. So that is kind of like, yeah. Uh, for we'll example, like we are using Gerrit, and now we are using also Spinnaker. So Gerrit, good support for Apple. Spinnaker, no support for Apple as yep. of today. We can continue. But then CD event, the Spinnaker support is coming. I don't, I doubt there will be new Gerrit unless from this community, because yep. this community is heavy user of Gerrit. Yeah. Okay. And that gives a dilemma of which one. So if we have this interoperability uh, between these events, then you you just choose the tool chain and the translator and make it work. <laughs> so. Should we move over to the open source open supply chain? No, I can talk about that. Yeah, you're done there. Yeah. You don't need to show any slides. Or no, 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 I had just. It's just that. Okay. Both points. Yeah. Okay. So we have 15 more minutes before planned lunch. Should we continue taking questions about this and then take your after lunch? If there are more questions, I think that's fine, right? Comment or maybe it's a question. So one thing that I pretty much can see the events does not have is a rich ecosystem. I'm wondering, are there any tools that will be reasonably easy to have support for both CD events and Python? Like, is Python heavily integrated in everything in those tools, or is it more like a surface contact, so to say? I'm thinking about something like the uh, vendor, for example. Yeah, that was the first tool that struck me as well. Uh, I think that, that the current Remrem interface is quite affected by Eiffel in a way. So maybe not too much. Maybe not. With, with some changes, it could probably be, be adopted. Maybe some non backwards compatible changes would be needed. Um, but it's not too far from there. I also think that the event repository in, in some sense could be agnostic to the protocol. Uh, Currently, there is some logic on top of the MongoDB in the ER, which has some knowledge about the events, at least the, the query engine there, when you can query for event chains, that's quite uh, quite uh, well, knowledgeable about Eiffel, of course. But uh, storing events in the MongoDB as documents is the same. Uh, so storing them should be just just do it for us. So I mean, if there would be a, if we would split the ER application in a protocol aware part and then a database part, then it would be easier. I'm not sure how, how easy that, that is done. I'm not really familiar with the ER code myself, but so I mean the so say the more infrastructure or broker near components might be easier to have multi-language. I'm not sure your experience on the AFM migration in Ericsson there is uh, talking about uh, bilingual and multi. We think that some of the other components in our community could be bilingual so in the sense. I can think a little bit about the intelligence. Um, of course, there is pretty heavy connections wrapped in queue there, um, but um, yeah. Not that the rules are easy to handle, but they're pretty dynamic in order to like set up. So it's you could probably do another JSON blob and then change that one. So the probably the logins could also change. Um, we were talking about the ER, Magnus, you're the author of uh, Goer. You feel that you there's a lot of Eiffel specific things there. You know. In the link query interface, I guess the query interface links. I guess it's yeah, that, that would be of course not yeah, specific, but apart from that, that, it doesn't yeah. really care. Yeah. And if you say like I could broadcast or change this plugin you have there. You mean if it would be able to have it produce T events instead? Yeah. 
No, it probably wouldn't be that hard. I mean, most of the stuff in there is, uh, I mean, it would be a fair amount of work, but certainly not impossible. On the other hand, there already is a, a Jenkins plugin. For yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. So. So I think the question was more about the things that exist in Eiffel, but don't yet exist in the mm -hmm. city events ecosystem. Visualization tools is one thing that, well, we don't have any well used or such visualization tools in Eiffel either. Yep. at the moment there are pox and there was actually in a recent uh, sig events meeting there was a presentation about the two different proposals on how to visualize CD events uh, from the election software technology <laughs> up to date um, so uh, i mean th there are discussions are ongoing there yeah. but given, given the lack of links how in that proof of concept, the links were added uh, okay. as a hack on the events. <laughs> but are there, looking at the CD events and also Eiffel, do the CD events have some specific use cases that they're targeting going out the door? The, the, the supply chain thing that you were talking about, Fadi, that's a pretty big use case to to target as the first. But do they have any smaller things that they, they say this is at least we have to achieve this when we go live or whatever? I think Fidelity went live with CD events for supply chain use case. Did it? I think so. Oh. Live internally in the Yeah, they have this evidence store which is kind of event yeah. repository. Yeah. And they are all in with CD events and I think they are using it for real. Wow. <coughs> like they are not talking this much, but like they have this case that you can read their case study. Okay. They like because they want the reason why they call it evidence stories exactly because of supply chain. They want to make sure like all these their you know internal checks they are done for whatever is developed by their teams. <laughs> and for others, visualization again, these things like they are not documented anywhere these different use cases. If you join the meetings, you you hear these things because some people from coming yeah. from a certain organization, they highlight this more than the other aspect. DSL is another topic, for example. Like again, it doesn't have direct connection to CD events. It takes from vocabulary. Like if you have the vocabulary there, we have CD events there, why not use vocabulary for pipeline standardization as well, which can connect us back to CD events. So you have like full you know standardization both human to machine level as well as machine to machine so yeah i don't know if there is a killer use case no i was thinking that i don't think we have anything written no anyway this comes up during the conversations yeah, yeah. yeah. like this bloomberg people came into cd events channel mm -hmm. they've been using cd events for testing i think yeah six months we don't know so depending on who you talk to they see this oh we can use this for this or this um, I'm thinking a little about uh, Eric Dura measurements, mm. which say that would be a, a smaller use case that CDMS is trying to address. Yeah, so that was the high focus case uh, last year too. I think that was a uh, reason to consider it as we release. Yeah. Zero two in March. In March, yeah. Um, it's also one of the other pieces. The city has been doing so. There are more people who can announce that, which means things that are typically here in the United States. One good use case is uh, when uh, you have this infrastructure spread across different blocks. Uh, so, for example, like I like GKE, but I like uh, Amazon ECR. So, your container industry is Amazon, uh, your Kubernetes is in Google. And then, the purpose of cloud event is to have a common language between across cloud infrastructure. And then, you embed your CD event on cloud. So, you can build the infrastructure, which is not in vendor cluster again. Across the CDF website, different and its services in that talk. Resources. 
resources. Resources like this. Then CD Last page. Yeah. Uh, and it was eight. Page eight. Yeah. So this is like is building the software development platform and CD is the thing that enables this. Speaking of supply chain security, are there any? How do you how do you secure the event integrity and, and all that? The signing discussion has been happening for a while now. Yeah, we haven't come very far with this with the discussions with supply chain. What has happened recently is that one of the I'm sure is Tracy a chair in the OpenSSF or is she just a member of the no, she's board? A of yeah, the board, and and she's quite heavily involved in making sure those discussions happen now between OpenSSF and CDF on interoperability and specifically with events. Uh, so things will hopefully happen quite soon. Thanks to that. But uh, so far, the only thing we have is the signed events where we sign artifacts. Uh, so we don't have any integrity uh, fields as we have in the method of security in IFO. No, are we asking signing the events themselves? Well, I mean, the, the whole, I mean, I, I, the events doesn't even cover, I believe, how events are distributed. No. So, I mean, in, in general, how would you? I, I would say, or I would more or less hope that it could be part of the cloud and a cloud events extension, rather, uh, yeah. to see that the events, the cloud events are emitted and uh, transferred securely and non tampered by tamperable. I mean, yeah. Uh, Andrea went there and revived an issue in CloudWorks. Maybe I did, yeah. I was reading that like last week. Okay. They discussed this in CloudWorks as well. Andrea, I, I think I, there might even be an issue about that from the city events perspective. Uh, yeah, because cloud event is the transport unit, so I'm sure yeah. all those things will be fine. CD events is just a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I'm. For me, who knows nothing about cloud events. Um, oh, yeah, this one. <laughs> 565 on cloud and spec. Yeah, Andrea. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you store it in a repository and, and you look it up, after a while, how, how do you know it's not been tampered with? So, when it comes to privacy and security, cloud events, it specifies that's out of the specification. Uh, okay. They say that uh, uh, domain specific event that it should be encrypted, uh, but it doesn't say how. That's like out of the specification. But you're asking about tamper proofness. Uh, I mean, but, but both knowing who actually sent an event and making sure that it's not been tampered with. Mm. I mean, in, in, encryption is typically, is it, these, these are usually broadcast events, so encryption is usually not that interesting itself. This is your point. It means that you not only really need to know that you know, the identity of that sort of within it, that is whoever he or she claims to be, or it's claims to be, but you also need to know whether that entity has the right to express itself in the past. Yes. Yes. You know, you can have to go for the perfectly bad and bad that express false information about an entity that has a right to express the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's very different. Yeah, and then that's only for a consumer to know necessarily who is allowed to express anything about a particular artifact. So, yeah. If you can start with it, at least the tool that you start with the fundamentals of the past, and then sort of, you know, um, on. But particularly when you talk about source and you know the uh, multi organization and the sort of, particularly when you break a chain of something, what you want to sort of encapsulate it, yeah. steal, or encrypt, or whatever, as soon as you have there, that sort of the situation will become very important. You need to put the entity itself, which means you get still all the notes. So we'll see how. 